What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video I am doing the last wrap up of 2021. There's, I never ended up doing a wrap up for November um, and I read a few books in December that I need to wrap up. I did not read a ton of books in the month of December. December was a weird month for me, it ended up being not a very good month for me personally so I just never really I didn't read a ton and also I was stuck on a book for like two weeks almost it was a good book but I read it for two weeks so that obviously slowed me down but a lot of good books so that's always a plus without further ado let's get right into it the first book that I want to talk to you guys about is a book that I read kind of I think early November but I never ended up uh, talking about it in any of my videos and it is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern this is a funny one because this was a reread I wanted to get back to. Um, I wanted to reread this book in order to read the second book and hopefully the third book in the series. But I ended up rereading this book and never picking up the second one, um, which I do want to do hopefully soon. I don't want to reread this a third time in order to read this one. So hopefully I can I pick this one up soon. But I ended up reading this one early November and honestly I am so happy I picked this book up because I enjoyed this book so much more the second time around. I remember liking the book when I first read it but I realize now that there's a ton that I missed the first time that I read this book so I'm super happy I ended up picking this book up a second time. So this is about a witch and a witch hunter um, who by some circumstances are bound in holy matrimony and it's a basically hate to love fantasy romance book and it was really good and I really really enjoyed it like I said the second time around I realized there's a ton that I missed the first time that I read it I remember thinking the love story was almost insta love but no you get a lot more of the romance in this book than what I remembered and you get a lot more of the like beginning of their relationship and how they fall in love and I loved seeing that. It's a witch so there's obviously a little bit of magic involved there and I love reading about that. It was just really really fun and obviously I loved Louise Leblanc. She was just so fun. It's very French inspired as well and there's a lot of like pastries which I love and it just really it was a really fun time. Is it anything spectacular? No. But it was just a really really fun time and I really want to read the second book now because um, a lot of people actually like the second book better than the first book, so that's always nice. So I'm really happy I reread this one. It was really nice and I'm glad that I did. So the next two books that I want to talk to you are books that I do have a reading vlog on, so I will link it up above. And I read for the historical romance readathon, and it is, and it is, it's in his kiss by Julia Quinn and uh, Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. Like I said, I have a reading vlog on these books. So I'm not gonna talk too much about them, but I liked both of them. This is the second to last book in the Bridgerton series, which I'm going through slowly but surely and I like all of them. I did enjoy this one. It wasn't my favorite. This is um, Hyacinth's storyline. I liked it. It wasn't like anything like amazing but it was a really fun book. I love that we got to see Lady Danbury a lot in this book and also you get to see the mother in this book a lot which I love the mother so any book in this series that involves the mother a lot more I enjoy. So it was a fun book. Really cool. It, I gave it four stars. I like all of the Bridgerton books. Uh, just not my favorite one from the series but it was it was still a really good book and then the next one is <sighs> this was so good guys this is devil in winter by lisa Kleypas. this is the third book in the wallflower series this is about evangeline evie sebastian lord st vincent this is one series that i would recommend reading in order because i do think you need to read the second book in order to really enjoy the this book because this takes place right after the second book and right right after the event of the second book which are really important to I think understand and enjoy this book and really to get to understand the beginning of Sebastian characters and his like origin I want to say um, he really starts as a villain in the stories and you really get to know him and he re you really get to see his arc and I really enjoyed this book and I really liked him. I know this is like one of people's favorite book from Lisa Kleypas and I can totally see why. I loved the love story. I loved Evie as well. I loved that she was this shy wallflower but around him she was a lot more assertive. She didn't take no for an answer. She was able to 
put like put her foot down she was able to tell what she really meant and what she really wanted and i just i loved their romance as well i love the friendship in this book in all of the wallflowers book i love the friendship of these like it's all it's four wallflowers and i love their friendship i really 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 enjoyed this book it was so good i highly recommend this series I loved it it was really good it was really really good i did not expect to like like i knew this was people's favorite book or one of people's favorite book with lisa clapis so i was hoping i was gonna like it but i did not expect to like it as much and i totally see why people are loving this book it was really good totally worth it the next book that i want to talk to you guys about is the book that took me about two weeks to read not because it was bad because it was actually a really good book and it is empire of the vampire by jay kristoff it took me two weeks because this is a monster of a book. 700 pages, it's so, it's so big. But this was so good. It was, it's my first Jay Kristoff book, so I wasn't familiar with him and his writing style. And it is a very particular writing style. It's very direct and it's very like, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, it's, it's, it's not for everyone. I feel like the first line kind of tells you if you're gonna like this book or not. And the first line says, ask me not if God exists, but why he's such a prick. That kind of tells you how this book is going to turn out. But it was so good. It's about this guy. Um, I suck with name. And it's not because I did not like the book. I just I just suck with name. It's about this guy named Gabriel de Lyon. And he is the last silver saint of his time. And silver saints are basically the only one that are able to kill vampires. And so he is basically telling his story uh, his origin almost you're following two timelines so the one the first one you're following him as he's a young boy who is training to become a silver saint and then the other timeline is him older while he is uh, looking for the grail that is kind of rumored to put an end to the day's death and rumored to put an end to uh, the vampires on this earth it was really good it's a long book but honestly it was really really good really really worth it i love the concept of the book it's almost like interview with a vampire because he is telling these he is telling his story to a vampire so you're really like it's really a story that you're being told like, go read it if you're on the fence um I loved it. The next book that I have, which I cannot find my physical copy for the life of me, I don't know where I went, but I will put a picture right here, and it is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Nolks. This, guys, was so freaking cute. I do have a reading vlog for the next two books that I want to talk to you guys about, but I don't know which one will go first, either the reading vlog or this video, so whichever. I'll put a link of that video when it's up. Anyways, this is a holiday baking romance book and honestly guys, it was everything. It was so freaking cute. I have read a few baking romance books um, in the past and they're not all that good. Honestly, there's not a ton that I loved, but this one was so freaking cute. It's about these two twin sisters. One is living in LA and she's the host of this reality baking show and the other one is living in this in their hometown, their small hometown and she is running the family baking business. But then one day, I don't remember the name, but the girl who lives in LA has a head injury and she cannot smell or taste anything but she's up for this like big promotion and she cannot take a few days off so she basically asked her sister to come to LA and take her place for a few days until she can go back to their hometown and she is running their family business so they swap places there's obviously a romance involved in both of these sisters it's during the holidays it's super freaking cute I loved it so freaking much you got the like small town vibe because of the hometown where they live and the baking shop and that's what was really cute and then you also got the like big city in LA and like a, not movie setting but like TV show setting because of that portion of the book so you got like both sides of like the spectrum that, which I thought was really fun to see and then they get back together I just was just so cute I loved it so much the ending was very very cheesy so get prepared it is a romance book so be prepared for that. But I just, I loved it. It was really freaking cute. It was just so sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, if you guys, if you are getting into moments, it's a good one to start with. There's no sexy scene from what I remember. I'm pretty sure there's no like sex scene in that book. So that's, if you don't like steamy scenes, that's a good one for you guys to try out. 
it was really cute and I really liked it and it was the perfect like Christmas baking book to read during the holidays so that was really nice I really wonder where my book went though the next one that I want to talk to you guys about is going to be is it upside down no the bear in the nightingale by Katrin Harden this I read because um, it was Ian's um, out of this whole reader book club pick for his discord group i will put a link to his channel down below so i read it for that and i also i wanted to read it for a really long time and this was really good i i knew and hoped that i was gonna like it and it was exactly what i thought it would be and totally different than what i thought it would be as well so this is about a girl who kind of is able to see mythical creatures or like magical creatures that are from the Russian old like folklore stories basically that's kind of where our story picks up she's the only one to, who is able to see those creatures it's a very slow paced story it's very atmospheric I think this is what stands out from this book it's the atmosphere it's very wintry but at the same time by the end of the book it almost got like creepy and like spooky-ish I feel like everyone talks about this book as a really good winter book but I feel like it would also be a really good fall slash Halloween book because of the stories that are in this book and the creature that you get to see and you get to learn about. I think the atmosphere and the world are what really stands out from this book and it's written I said that in my um, reading vlog. I feel like the writing style is very detached, almost, which is not a bad thing. I just feel like I didn't feel like super connected with any of these characters. I mean, by the end, you are connected with Vasya. Vas Vasya? I don't know how to say her name. I'm sorry. Um, because obviously she's our main character. But the way that it's written, it's it's you're very much like being told the story from a distance so I didn't feel as connected to these characters as I wish I would have been I did start the second book and I think I feel like the second book is very different than the first book um, in some regards which I'll, I'll talk about the second book when I'm finished it when I finished it um, but I still really really enjoyed this book and I, I mean I picked up the second book right after it so that tells you something I don't always do that but I really wanted to do that in, in this instance it's a really interesting book but it was really really good and I really really enjoyed it and it's a really short book so it goes by really fast for as slow paced as this book is I feel like it goes by really fast and you read it pretty quickly so I don't know I really liked it and I, I thought it was really really interesting and I thought it was really really cool and the concept was really cool and the world was really cool and everything was just so interesting and I'm rambling now so I'm gonna put this book down but I really enjoyed this book so yeah that's it and now we have the last book that I read this year and it is The Love Hypothesis by Ailey Azelwood this is the last book that I pick up this year but it also made the best of 2021 books that I've read this year so that tells you a lot I adored this book so freaking much this is about a girl named Olive and she's a PhD candidate uh, in biology and science her best friend is interested in a guy that she barely dated like a few dates and she is telling her best friend yes you can go on a date with him I'm over him I'm fine but her best friend is like no this is girl code this is girl code I don't want to go there like it's fine I, I don't want to go there so in order to prove to her best friend that she's really over this guy she kisses a random guy because she wants to prove that she's over her ex and so enters Adam which is our love interest in this book and he is a professor he's super like grumpy moody I loved Adam so much and I loved Olive so much I love both of these characters and I loved their romance so much honestly I didn't expect to like this book as much but I connected with Olive on so many different levels I just I ended up tabbing this book which I never do in romance I like I never tab books in romance I feel like romance normally are like one and done I read them and I get over it but this was so good I just I loved her so much and I loved the romance in this book you're pretty much following Olive's perspective all the way through so I love how Adam starts as this grumpy guy but you really get to know him as Olive gets to know him and as he opens up to Olive as well so I just love seeing their romance and how that started and how that like develop in a like love story it was just so cute i love this book so freaking much it's i know like people are talking about this book a lot because it's everywhere right now but it's totally deserving of all of its hype it was so freaking good go read it if you're into romance book there are a few steamy scenes in this book but really not that bad um it's really not 
too crazy. I think it's pretty accessible to anyone in my opinion. And so honestly, I highly recommend this book. It was so good. Five stars. I loved it. This and I think I just needed this book at that period of time as well. So that was really nice too. It was just really good. I love this book so freaking much and it, it was everything. And I want to reread it like soon. Which I never reread a book so every time I say that it's a big deal for me. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the books that I've read recently. Have you read any of them? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know your thoughts on them. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night depending on when you're watching this. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! I can't believe